While in Zector, Windup, Dino Rabbit, Chaos Dragons, Dark World, and Hero continued to dominate the format, a new contender would take flight in an attempt to break the established meta. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. This is one of the few times that I finished recording and I felt like, oh, no, I actually wasn't supposed to win that one. I feel almost baited by the deck that I played. Anyway, here's Windup. Now, as discussed previously, Windup was a force during this period. Now, on September 24th, 2012, there's a YCS in Indianapolis, and it's a very strange one. Uh, Robbie Cole actually ends up top fouring with Gadget Girgia. It's won by Junior on Six Samurai? Using the help of a card that had just been released in the Samurai Strike structure deck, Shadow of the Six Samurai Shien. But one of the biggest stories from the top cut is Windup. Now, Windup has had Zen Maity cut to a singular copy, but that doesn't mean you should count out the deck just yet. As we figured out when testing Windup, one of the more powerful parts of Windup isn't the fact that it can hand loop, it's the fact that it can summon a million monsters in one turn. And Windup Factory and Windup Rabbit still remain an exceptionally powerful combo in every version of the deck. Notably, all that summoning does finally facilitate an end board. As you saw when I played Simo last time, the best we could manage was a couple of Zen Maidies and a Zen Mains. Now we've got a monster worth building too. So it's time to address the Xyz in the room and talk about Shockmaster. Now, number 16 Shockmaster is one of the most powerful cards ever printed. It's three level four monsters, so Konami expected it would be a high investment. Once per turn, you can detach an Xyz material from this card to declare a card type, monster, spell, or trap. That type of card cannot be activated, or if you pick monster specifically, cannot activate its effects until the end of your opponent's next turn. That's a long time. It helps to conceptualize this card if you're a newer player in terms of VFD, except it can turn off a whole bunch of different types of cards. If you're making a lethal push and you expect your opponent has battle traps, you can turn off traps. If your opponent has a blank board and you expect they're holding a Tragodia or a Gors, you can turn off monsters before going to combat. In the past, it didn't feel like the combo decks were even that monster heavy. You can see we're playing one, and we still have 13 spells and 9 trap cards. Although, there's an argument as to whether uh, the chicken or the egg comes first when it comes to Shockmaster and combo decks playing a trap lineup. But at this point in Yu-Gi-Oh!, you could still very much win the game if you were locked out of monsters for a singular turn. This is where that starts to change. Decks like Windup, Girgia Karakuri, Hieratic, and soon to be Mermail prove that monster effects are at a premium, and Shockmaster is a great way to lock your opponent out of the game before they're even able to make a single move. Windup has a laughably easy Shockmaster line. By starting with Windup Magician and Windup Shark, the same combo that it used to hand loop back in the day, it can end on a Shockmaster plus a couple of other Xyz that will more than present a lethal threat on your following turn. All those monsters are easily accessible at any stage in the game provided you've got a Windup Factory and something like a Windup Rabbit that can trigger that effect manually. At this point in time, the deck had not yet been completely solved, and as a result you can still see a Windup Hunter sticking in this deck list, a holdout from when the best thing the deck could do was loop a player's hand. You can still perform a Hunter loop during this format, it's just a lot less formidable. Only does one or two cards depending on how many rats you can get into rotation, and as a result isn't a consideration moving forward. Innovations on this deck list occur, and what happens in the future is those maxis come out of the deck, the hunter does as well, the trap lineup is more consolidated, but functionally you are looking at what windup looked like for a period of about five months. 
and it did very well during that period. So let me walk you through the individual cards. We've got two Maxi, a Sangan with two Tour Guide from the Underworld. This card is now semi-limited. One Thunder King Ryo. This would eventually be bumped up. This is just such a powerful normal summon during this format. Tragodia, Wind Up Hunter, Triple Wind Up Magician, Triple Wind Up Rabbit, Triple Wind Up Rat, Triple Wind Up Shark. Some individuals played two copies of Wind Up Magician instead of three. Uh, there was a little bit of a disagreement over which one was more optimal, uh, but like the disagreement between two or three copies of Pot of Desires, the people who favored three were correct. For spells, we've got one Book of Moon, one Dark Hole, one Heavy Storm, one Mind Control, one Monster Reborn, one Body as a Shield, Triple Mystical Space Typhoon. You need your combo to resolve. One Pot of Avarice, a great way to get sharks back in a rotation. Triple Wind Up Factory, Double Bottomless Trap Hole, Double Dimensional Prison, the Solemn Suite, two Warnings and a Judgment, and two Torrential Tribute. In the side deck, we've got Cyber Dragon, a lot of Machina, a lot of Girgia, Effect Veiler, a lot of Monster Combo around. Uh, in spite of uh, things like Shockmaster, decks like Karakuri Girgia, Wind Up, even in Zector were still very prolific during this period. Snowman Eaters, Thunder King Ryo, another Tragodia, Double Dimensional Fissure. This is one of the decks that can play this card, and it does so exceptionally well. It turns out you don't care that much about the graveyard and using Rat a whole bunch of times during your turn if you can choke your opponent out of the game and just play an advantage-oriented style of gameplay bolstered by a Wind Up Factory. Double Messenger of Peace. Now, I know this looks very out of place, but this became standard in Windup during the period, eventually creeping into main boards, like in uh, Mike Steinemann's extremely famous Top 32 list, and to Needle Sealing to Royal Decree. Needle Sealing is written a lot about in the Yu-Gi-Oh! blog because it was a very popular tech choice, so much so that vendors were sold out of this card, a common. In the extra, we've got Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, a suite of fives including Ardreus, Tyrios, and Zen Mayo. Because you're sharks didn't necessarily have to go down, you could really dip into the toolbox on these fives and threes. Speaking of, we've got Leviathan, a really sick inclusion in the deck. Leviathan, Giga Brilliant, famous for how effectively it enabled OTKs. Acid Golem, your catch-all for big sticky dudes. Tem Tempo, the Percussion Jin, and of course, Wind Up Carrier Zen Maidi and Zen Mains. For fours, we now have a defensive option in My Stroke, the Symphony Jin, alongside the Utopia. We've of course got the Shockmaster, which you are almost always going into, a Photon Papli Operative. This card is exceptionally powerful and can be used in conjunction with Wind Up Rat. If you summon a monster off Magician, it is summoned in defense, and Rat has to switch to defense in order to trigger its effect, but you can move it to attack position by using the effect of this monster here. So with that, let's jump into the games. Doesn't get any easier than that, you guys. Holy shit, that was a blowout. And I really hope we can actually go two for two here because after that last performance, this deck is going to make that deck look like nothing because this is another crazy combo deck that's looking to just end the game in one turn, Hieratic. Now, we haven't actually had the opportunity to talk about Hieratic all that much. It actually came out all the way back in like May or April of 2012, but didn't really see competitive success until around this time. And Hieratics are in very explosive aggro combo deck that uh, take advantage of the fact that you can just special summon a ton of these guys to the field. So let's go ahead and start the card by card. First up is three copies of Card Card D. Now, what we're aiming to do is to assemble a handful of Hieratics, but also like some ways to interact with our opponent's spells and traps. I'm looking at MST, Heavy Storm, Forbidden Lands, so we can just kill them in one shot. And so Card Card D allows us to just draw two cards. Yeah, we don't do much else, but I mean, we have Trigodia, we have Maxi, we have Gores. We have ways to protect ourselves after using a Card Card D. And so so that's why this card is in here. It's not really like uncommon to just do this as turn one and pass. This would represent like a going second deck by like modern day standards, but back then you're still able to draw when you go first and just getting more cards is just gonna help you get to your combo that much quicker. I would really love to see a modern deck building take on Hieratic of 2012 because I feel like we would actually just cut stuff like this and just play more cards for going second and just blind second anyway. Then we have three Gen X Ally Birdman. If there is a reason that this card is limited, I hope this episode demonstrates why because Birdman being able to bounce back red MD to your hand pre errata by the way is just disgusting we already talked about gores then we have the Hieratic so most of the Hieratics have the ability that you contribute another Hieratic to special summon themselves from your hand and then they also have some sort of like other effect in addition to that so let's go through all of them so a set actually allows you to normal summon itself instead of actually having a special summon clause and that's good because it sort of starts your chain of just tributing to special summon because 
because you need to at least get one of these on the field and none of them are level four natively. So this allows you to bypass that. And this has a neat effect where you can actually make all Hieratics the same level as a targeted Hieratic, that way actually allowing you to go into some rank fives or rank six plays, depending on what your board uh, asks for. Then we have three Nebthet. Nebthet's kind of like the worst one because it's a five specifically, and we're looking for like sixes more so. Nebthet does allow you to tribute a Hieratic from your hand or field to pop a monster though, so that's pretty decent. It's also 2,000 attack. Sue allows you to uh, pop back row instead of monsters, and it's 2,200. Tefnu, it's also very strong because it's sort of like a Cyber Dragon built in effect to Special Summon. And then all of these have the ability that when they are tributed, they activate in the graveyard to Special Summon a Dragon Normal Monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard, but you make its attack and defense zero. So the card of choice this time around is Wattail Dragon. Some players would play cards like Luster Dragon number two. Some players would play both. Some players would play double Wattail Dragon. Some players would have to play a level five dragon, so that way they'd have more access to some rank five plays. This deck is opting to go the more rank six route, but just some of the diversity of options here that are available to us. So when you're able to tributes for something like a Sue and you trigger a Hieratic Engrave, you get the Wattail Dragon, and just like that, you have two sixes on the field, and those overlay into our boss monster of sorts, Atom. Now, Atom is crazy. At any two level six dragons make it, and once per turn, you detach a material to special a dragon from your deck. Effects aren't negated, you just make its attack and defense zero, and a tomb can't attack the turn that you use this effect, which does not matter in the slightest, because we can just overlay Gaia Dragon on top of it once we're done with our combos, and we can attack freely anyway. Our main target off of this effect is Red-Eyes Dark Dismetal Dragon. This is pre errata so it's not a hard once per turn or anything, so we're able to abuse this multiple times, which is what makes this deck so explosive. We've already seen how good Red MD is in Chaos Dragons, but this deck takes it to another level. That does it for the monsters, though, but we have a bunch of spells like Dark Hole, Triple Forbidden Lance, Heavy Storm, Double Hieratic Seal of Convocation. This is just Rhoda for the whole archetype, which is nuts. It's not once per turn or anything. Reborn Triple MST, Double Pot of Duality. Again, it's weird seeing this in like a combo deck, but turn one, you don't really mind this because maybe you can get like a combo piece to help you extend on the following turn, so that way you can kill your opponent. If you're not ready to kill the opponent, you shouldn't be committing with this deck because you won't really have any recovery whatsoever. And then Double Compulse may seem like an odd inclusion. It helps you just not die, but also you can bounce Red MD back to hand to abuse it some more, which is hilarious. For the extra deck, we have some rank fives in the form of Adrius as well as Zen Mayo. Again, like you can make rank fives in this deck. It's kind of awkward and you don't really want to, but it can come up. Three copies of a tomb, three copies of Gaia Dragon to overlay on the Atom after we use their effect. Remember, this isn't like a hard once per turn or anything, so you're able to just keep going off. Insector Exabeetle can out like weird shit like Zen Mains and the like, so you want to play this. Force Focus has somewhat of a relevant effect, but it's also 2800 attack and can help close like the OTK lethal threshold, so that's why this is here. Strike Bouncer is probably like the best rank six aside from a tomb because it actually negates opponent's monster effects and burns them for a thousand. And then we have a couple synchros in here like Scrap Dragon and Stardust Dragon because uh, Gen X Ally Birdman and any of the fives can make this and your end board can actually be something like Red MD plus like in a tomb or like a rank six and like a Stardust Dragon, which is just insane. And then there's one card missing. I think this is supposed to be Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon because there's a Sidra in here, like just one of, but uh, the deck list said 14, so I'm not sure if that was a mistake or not. Uh, we're going up against Windup, so maybe I should play it, but I guess I'll just play it and uh, be fair. Then the rest of the side deck is Triple Smashing Ground, because sometimes we just need to get over, like, weird things, although our attack values are pretty high in this deck. Triple Royal Decree, just so that way we can ensure we're not dealing with any traps, like when we know we're going first. Nobleman for, like, decks like Geargi and the like. Uh, Double Night Beam is just more copies of MST, so when we know we're going second, this card's gonna come in. Maxi, depending on the matchup. Gemini Imps is in here, I think explicitly for Dark World, but the person who piloted this deck, Parker Robinson, uh, just never played Dark World, so it just didn't even come up. And then a Dust Tornado, it's like more spell and trap removal, which is pretty much the biggest thing we're worried about in this format. So guys, I really hope that this deck will go off and we can really show off what it's able to do. If it's anything like what we saw last time with Karakuri Girgia, I think this is going to just take that to another level, but obviously we'll have to see what happens. Guys, I'm not gonna make you wait any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to do it. Well, buddy, uh, here we are once again. Uh, you're back in the driver's seat with your windups, your favorite deck. This went so well for you last time you played this deck. Can I just tell you? Uh, I, I can't wait for a repeat performance. <laughs> It is so shocking that this deck was so dominant for so long and has a 0% win rate on this series. 
Uh, I mean, it's only had one showing, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could all change today. That could all change today, ladies and gentlemen. Could. It could become 50%. Uh, and going up against a deck that I have, like, zero prior experience playing, I think you're probably favored here, if I had to guess. But, uh, I you know, wish I you would not say shit episode. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to have fun last episode playing my Gear Gear Karakura. You get to have fun styling on me with Wind Up, we'll and see. I think everyone is happy. We'll see, we'll see. All right, let's go ahead and shout the patron. That is Ronnie Almaraz. Thank you for the support, buddy. You got the hand up? Yep. I'm going even. It's odd. Whoa! The number of okay. wind up hunters currently legal, which is one. Uh, but I actually don't think that's true. Zenmeity is at one. It's Zenmeity. I was about to say, a hunter never got hit for us TCG players, I don't believe. That is uh, true. One of the one of the strange differences between the TCG and the OCG. They went after Hunter. We went after Zen Maid. Well, I think they went after Zen Maid too. Right? Yeah, in eventually. Any case. So the unfortunate yeah. uh, truth of the matter is that um, this deck... Uh, does still have a hunter loop, and eventually people get off it because it's just not very consistent. It does not rip enough cards to actually be worth this huge investment. You know, theoretically, I could do it. I'll draw our sixth card. Stand by main. Oh, good. Wish you the best of luck. All right, this is just going to be normal. Uh, I'm going to normal rabbit. I'm going to set two, and I am going to pass turn. Okay, I will draw, and I'll go to main one myself here. All right, I'm going to kick things off with a pot of duality. No response to this. All right, let's see what we're working with here. Okay. Oh, those are pretty good. I think I'll take the max C, actually. That seems fine. Bet you will. Uh, have a bit of a deterrent, uh, so we'll shuffle up. Uh, I am going to normal summon card card D. Oh, wow. Uh, thinking here. Yeah, I think I have to do this. Uh, I'm going to torrential. Going to chain your rabbit, I imagine? I will. All right. Uh, card cards down. I'll set one. Throw it to you, buddy. All right. Uh, get this boy back. Yep. All right, main one. Sure. I will normal wind up magician. Is that okay? That is fine. I will activate the effect of rabbit, and then I will activate the effect of wind up magician. There you go, magician. This is basically combo here. You can get shark. Um, yeah, I'll max you here. Okay, no problem. Uh, I will just get shark in that case. Yeah. We'll draw. I don't want to give you more cards. Sitting on magician shark doesn't exactly seem like ideal, though. It's not. I'll get in for six and 15. All right, I'll take 21 in total. Mm, second main, I will set two, and I will pass the turn back to you. A uh, lot of back row. I'll draw, go to main one. This is interesting. Uh, I will set one and throw it to you. All right, stand by my guy returns. Okay, now how do we want to do this? You've got two back row. I could go into Tornado Dragon. That seems pretty good. Right? That was legal during this time. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to normal summon a shark. Add a second shark. That's frustrating. Uh, sure. I'll declare the effect of shark to increase by one. Ooh. Yeah. I think I see where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, fine. I'll do it for the other one as well. Sure. Zen Mayo. Okay. So this is the boy. Um, this card was like a million dollars when it first came out. I'm going to compulse your magician. I will chain wind up rabbit targeting magician. I'm gonna bounce him out. Uh, that's fine. Okay, got the four in hand. Uh, I'm gonna activate Zen Mayo. Uh, I'm gonna discard a shark. I'm gonna target the set behind wind up rabbit and your set. So your middle set, Yeah. correct? Okay. I will chain MST and I'm gonna go after this one. That is really rough. Oh my god. That's like the biggest punish in the universe. It is. I was really hoping you were going to go for it. All right, cool. Because <sighs> okay. it has to target two. Yep. Let's get in. Um. Okay. So 14 and then 26. Mm -hmm. After the 26, I'm going to drop Trag. Sure. Uh, he's at 18 right now. 18. Correct. Back to you, buddy. Okay. I will draw. See what we can do. I think I have to do this, otherwise I'm probably dead. So I'm going to sack Trag for Nebthet. Oh, uh, I will bottomless here. All right. Uh, well, we might be dead anyway then. <laughs> cool. So that goes. I can... Yikes, you get Magician back. Yeah, there's like Tef plays maybe? I have a Tef knew it. I mean... He was a bit awkward with Trag on the field as well, but it was the fact that, I mean, you had bottomless regardless, but Nebthet being a five is actually garbage. At least Nebthet could have taken out 
uh, both of your guys. On the current board, I cannot do that. And I also can't even attack with Tefnuit. So, like, I don't exactly know what I'm going to do here. Uh, I think my only option is to card card D. <laughs> uh, didn't you... Oh, and I already tripped you something. Never mind. <laughs> I'm dead. All right. Game two. <laughs> I don't know. I could have not summoned Trag and then like maybe I could have gone like special Tefnuit, sack it for the Nebthet. At least I would have like gotten something off of that. Even if you did bottomless, I, I don't know. I, I think I was dead no matter what in that instance, but uh, not very impressive for this deck's first showing. I will say. I, I uh, didn't even you, get to do anything cool. I just made no. it in my own. <laughs> the coolest thing you did was like popping your own back row and getting punished. And yeah. uh, I still lost. I thought that yeah. was going to give me a window of opportunity, but uh, this is strange. I feel like this deck like wants to go second, but like you still draw a you card when you yeah. go first. And so like, I actually think I do uh, just go first. So good luck, buddy. I'll draw. I think the play is just set to pass. Go ahead. Interesting. I'll draw yeah. for turn, stand by main. Not very impressive. Yeah, it's all good. Man, I mean, if those two aren't anything, you are dead here. What? What fuck am I afraid of? Compulse? It's exactly Compulse, yeah. <laughs> You'd tell me if it was Compulse, right? Of course, buddy. I would tell you if it's Compulse. All right, I'll activate Factory. That's always happening. Sure. Haven't gotten to show off this card yet. This card's we crazy. Um, no. Wind Up is good because it has this stupid combo that wins you the game immediately. Uh, but if you fail to do it and you draw Factory, you win the game anyway because it draws mm -hmm. you a million cards. If you've ever played with this card in a limited environment, it's not fun. Uh, Rabbit Factory is an FTK. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess you're probably on like MSTs. Everyone was on like three MSTs. I'm going to put you on MST Compulse. So we're going to normal Wind Up Magician here. Is that okay? That's fine. I will declare Shark. I have no response. All right, new chain magician. Sure. Uh, I will also activate factory here. I think I can do this. These are two uh, when you can effects meeting their condition at the same time, uh, but they shouldn't conflict with each other. I don't feel like they should. Uh, I think you would get the add at some point regardless, so I, I'll allow it. You're fine. Definitely will resolve factory, and we're always adding shark off of factory. Makes sense. We're going to grab a second magician here. Is that okay? Yep. Okay, uh, I will activate the effect of Shark. I'm going to decrease its level by one. I will trigger this Magician. Okay. Uh, we're going to get Wind Up Rat. That makes sense. Now, unfortunately, uh, this does not summon Rat in attack. That would be pretty based. They did They did remember to put one restriction on this card, but you know what they didn't remember is that I can now go into Photon Papli Operative. That's true. I will use Pappy here, detaching uh, this Magician and targeting the Rat. That's pretty sick. Isn't that uh, sick? It's so neat. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, that is fine. Yeah. All right. We'll use rat effect targeting magician. That's good. We will go rat and the level three shark to go into Zen Um, oh, I didn't think I'd get this far. I'll trigger Zen here to detach. We will summon a uh, magician from deck. Sure. And then we will trigger this magician to summon shark. So this Good. is Shockmaster, if we want it. Maybe I should go Hunter instead. I think that Hunter might be funnier. No, I'm being bad. Uh, we'll go one, two here. I'm going to overlay for Shock. Sure. You and get to reciprocate. Anything at res here. <laughs> Nothing at res. Um, Do I just kill you? 23 plus 15 plus 21 is how much? It's... You got 44, 54, 5,900 on board. 59 plus the 15 from the shark that I have is... 74? So you're still a little bit off. Yeah, so we'll go shock. We'll just call fucking uh, monster, I guess. Maybe you boarded into mirror force? No, there's no shot. Uh, I'm going to combat. Um, sure. Zen maybe. All right, uh, 15? Yep. 23 and 21. I'll take it all. Second main, I'll set one back to you. End phase decree. Okay, I mean, that's something. Main one. Dark hole. Oh, well, someone's got a dark hole going on. That's fine. I'm under shock master, so there's not a lot I can do. Uh, at least I cleared the shock master. That's pretty good. I think I will set one card and I will throw it to you. All good. I'll MST the new one. I will MST your factory. Sure. 
Uh, normal rabbit. Yikes. Yep. Special shark. Sh sure. Combat. Wow. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, man. That's so lame. Oh, my God. I had a fucking lance, but it's 2,900. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Yeah. Well. You oh, got man. it. My hand was Red MD Convocation Tefnuit. Oh, that's, so, that's kind of cracked. I'm not going to no, lie. No, it was. So my, what I was thinking was like, okay, so I set Decree Lance. I was pretty pissed I didn't set the MST2, but I was trying to play around if you had heavy so I could at least snipe one back row. Right. So I'm thinking like, okay, if he doesn't open combo, I can next turn convocation for whatever combo piece i'm missing tef knew it like basically is like the conduit to everything and then i have red md in hand so like i can't get it off a of tum but uh i can oh i'd get sue for turn that's even better um so the problem is in that turn one i'm thinking like okay so i could have gone like convocation for like sue uh no i couldn't get sue i would have had to have gotten if i wanted to go first and like not just set and pass i would have to get a set exactly because this is the one that you can normal summon without tributing right uh tef knew it unfortunately requires you to uh have a mo you to have a monster on the field so i'd have to go like normal a set tribute for tef knew it um and then oh, that's, actually that's i don't even think normals. i can yeah it's, yeah it's i can't even terrible. do that holy shit yeah um, so that doesn't even work uh, um do you want to do a game three i think we should do a game three like yeah. i was close to comboing off i top decked that dark hole which fucking saved me for my life i'm like okay if he doesn't have oh. a monster i can live through shark but... hearing that it's the top deck oh my god i feel so much better <laughs> because i was like i'm looking at this board and i'm like Joseph, you literally just tunneled on Shockmaster. You should have made Hunter. You literally can't lose if you Hunter for three. And then I was like, oh, okay, well, if it was the top. Well, buddy, uh, this is fair, right? You got to have your fun this episode. I got to have my fun last episode. I didn't even really get to play, yeah. in all honesty. Like, I, I kind of just got steamrolled this Welcome time. to my <laughs> life, buddy. Welcome to fair. my life. This is. I shouldn't be complaining. It is, it is good, though, because it shows off just how lopsided this format could be if you weren't playing a top tier. Like, people remember the 2012 Abyss Rising format as being fun and interesting, but if you weren't on one of the good decks, you were not having much fun, and the games were not interesting. All right, so we'll go ahead and draw for turn here. Uh, let me think if there's anything I can do with this hand. So the weird thing about this deck, and I, I sort of like talked about this before, where it's like you can go first, but it's like you just want to go second. And like most of the other decks in the format just really like don't have this like sort of like auto win turn one. So like wind up is like an interesting dynamic here. So it does. I think just to like show off what this deck can do to an extent uh so i don't just like get blown out again i am gonna do something so i am going to normal summon a set that's fine i'm going to tribute a set to special summon sue using okay. sue's effect all right now we're off to the races so now we get to activate this uh a set that we tributed off here and we get to grab from our deck a level six or lower vanilla dragon so we're gonna get Wattail dragon which was the dragon of choice at the time still with you okay so from here we get to overlay into uh the boss monster of the deck which we never got to saw in the episode uh hieratic dragon of or king rather of a tum yep. now this card is actually like fucking crazy if you have no effect veiler i'm going to detach a material to special a dragon from my deck but its attack and defense become zero so is that fine so with it uh this is where you would grab red md but i'm the best player in the game and open red md at one in my opening hand twice <laughs> in this case we have to do something different all right well unfortunately atom has to nab from deck which is kind of a pain in the ass mm -hmm. so i'm actually just gonna grab a tefnuit gotcha. here uh now it gets pretty neat if you have a gen x ally birdman as well because then you can start getting into your synchro pool but unfortunately i do not have one uh so what you can do is we can actually banish this atom for the red md uh red md can use its effect to get back one of our other dragons so uh this is banished excuse me so we can get back anything here it's pretty like inconsequential for the most part uh so we'll get this uh copy of sue here uh we can sack off the sue for another sue to be able to grab another one out of our deck. I'm overextending here, but like, I honestly don't care at this point. Um, so we can do this. We can overlay our two sixes for a second copy of a tomb. Yeah. We can use this effect again. Uh, I hope to God I still have a six. I do. I have one last Sue in the deck. And with the last two sixes I have, uh, 
I can overlay them and we'll go for a strike bouncer. That's sick. I'll set one, throw it to you, buddy. So like, this is like the board this deck can make turn one. If you have Birdman, it can make like Stardust instead, which is like obviously better. Um, but like, again, you want to kill the opponent and this just like loses to like Dark Hole. So let's see it. Uh, I'll MST the back row here. I'll chain Compulse on the red MD. I get it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna set three and back to you. Okay, we'll go ahead and draw them. Main one, didn't think I'd get it this far. So from this position, you have three back row that I still have to worry about, and that's kind of annoying. Uh, we could do that. It's kind of funny. Oh yeah, okay. I mean, I'll uh, give it a shot. Uh, let's start by firing uh, the Atom here. That's fine. With Atom, I'm going to grab the Nebthet. Unfortunately, I'm out of Sue, so I can't start picking at your back row. Yep, that's fine. Uh, I will banish Atom for Red MD. Cool, so now I'm on a Torrential. Figure. All right, uh, we're trying to get to Zen Mayo, which we actually had a very easy way to do, but sadly, that's not the case. Uh, so, okay, these all die. Uh, we're basically fucked here, uh, showing off the weakness of the deck, and uh, go ahead. Uh, and step <laughs> this was fun. To your back row. Even better, fantastic. All right, God is my witness. I need exactly a, <laughs> a rabbit off the top. That is not a rabbit. Okay, so here's, here's the weirdness of this hand. I do not have any windups, so you get another oh. shot at it. <laughs> I mean, I get another shot at it, but like, you know, I'm playing a combo deck with no God cards. God is it's my witness. Card card <laughs> card, card D? Sick. Uh, MST the back row. It is solemn. Card, card oh D. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Draw two. It's my end phase. Go ahead. Stand by me. Oh, it just gets better and better. It just gets better and better. Okay, we'll draw. Uh, I'm Slowly never gonna let you. Summon. I'm out of like fucking Hyratic. You are though. never going to be able this. to summon Tefnuit. I'm never gonna summon another monster. That's the plan, right? Uh, duality. Duality is a okay with me. I don't fucking know. Oh, there's Birdman. Right. Oh, well, there's Birdman. my fucking Birdman that I would have liked to have earlier. Um, I think I'm a bit past using Birdman at this. You get point. convocation. You got time. I ain't doing nothing. I do have time. I do have time. I'll grab the convocation. Yeah. I don't know how I'm winning this game. Uh, I'll convocation. Yes. I will grab a set. Oh shit! Okay, that's a guy. I will normal a set. You got it. I will hit you for one thousand because its attack becomes a thousand. Absolutely based. I will pass the turn. <laughs> Stand by me. Oh sure. My fucking god. Back to you. <laughs> You're joking. No, I'm There's not. I'm no not. way. MST the back row. It's bottomless. I like don't even have a play, dude. <laughs> what do I do. This is so great. You're, you're, it was like I did two balls to the wall setups. You did a balls to the wall setup, and now we're just staring at each other. We're just looking. Yeah. Well, one of the other problems is with this deck is that the only normal monster I have is Wattail Dragon. Uh, I don't have a five. Most of the Hieratic decks just didn't bother playing a five vanilla because it's just like not good. Right. And so as a result of that. Like, even if I tribute off the Aset and like, I can't get anything aside from the six. All right, we'll try this. I'm gonna tribute Aset for Tefnuit. That's fine. This allows me to trigger the Aset. Yeah. Uh, I have to get the the Wattail. Mm -hmm. uh, so this does give me a, a rank six line, which like isn't bad, yeah, but... Seems pretty good. Uh... So I have two lines here. I can either overlay these two for like a strike bouncer to try to like hold you off, or I can go for like the faster clock, which doesn't have any protection whatsoever. I'm gonna go for the two turn clock. I'm sure. feeling dangerous. So let's go for it. Uh, so we're gonna go with Tomb. That's fine. Uh, detach a tomb. We're going to grab our, yeah. So we're gonna grab this, Neb set from the deck. Yep. Uh, I'm going to activate a second convocation. You got it. Grab the other Neb set. Uh, I was trying to find a way to like use a set because a set has this ability that can make all of the Hieratics the same level as one you have. But unfortunately, uh, I can't do this and keep one on the field at the same time. So I can special this Neb set with its effect. Mm. Uh, get the Wattail back, which has zero attack. So it's not like it's very good. And then I have to, uh, we haven't shown this part of the deck off yet. We have to overlay Gaia Dragon, the Thunder Charger on a tomb because a tomb can't attack the turn it uses its effect. Yep. So this is 46. I mean, it's a decent clock, but uh, 
Puts me vulnerable to everything. So let's Jeez. see what you got, buddy. Uh, oh, God. I don't think I can do it. Uh, so this uh, Wattail Dragon's at zero, right? Correct. Yeah, I think I'm dead here. Um, Whoa! It's uh, okay. Factory, Factory, Mind Con, Magician, and Rat. Uh, the Magician was a late add Ugh. to the hand, but uh, maybe I should have set the Magician last turn so it could go to the graveyard and I could have a Rat this turn, but I figured there were just so many punishes to that, and if you ended mm. up going for a Bouncer line, I literally don't have a way to win the game in that scenario unless I, like, spend the Mind Con on it. Yeah, I mean, it's just rough. My last card I just drew was a uh, Torrential Tribute. I need a shark. I just actually need a shark. There's Rabbit. Uh, one of the very mm. few bricks this deck can produce, a uh, Factory plus the windups that don't play nice with Factory. Shark and Rabbit, of course, are the ones you want to see in the same hand as it. But, uh, woof. Right. Um... That was kind of cool. I'm glad we got to see the Hieratic deck pop off a little bit. Uh, obviously, it wasn't like the best case scenario because we I didn't get to show off any of the Gen X Ally Birdman shit. I mean, I guess I did that with like the Gear Gear deck. But uh, this deck is probably like one of the best reasons why Birdman eventually got limited. Uh, just because you can bounce like red md back to hand which yeah. is silly <laughs> and then uh that enables like i said the uh, level eight synchro plays and typically uh like we saw when you torrentialed me uh first off that's basically like the end of this deck there's mm -hmm. pretty much under no circumstance where you should be winning in most instances just because it takes you forever to be able to draw the cards back i fortunately already had a tefnu in hand and then card car got me to like duality and like another hieratic i think so like i wasn't like far off from just like assembling something but you just run out of gas very quickly when yeah. you're playing this deck uh most of your like just cards especially if you're going for like the otk and you get stopped you commit like probably two gaia dragons like at least on the because you're probably gonna have double a tomb out if you're like really comboing off which i didn't get to do it's not really hard to see why this deck did well maybe by the first two games it was but uh i think this third game did a much better job of representing that and you know i could have easily if i maybe just let you uh just or in turn one, if I just like set and passed and just didn't do anything, I could have maybe killed you. Uh, maybe not through TT, but I did have some like interaction for you. Uh, it's hard to say though. And all the other decks around this time just didn't, aside again, apart from like wind up, didn't really just have this sort of one turn kill sort of plan. And so you can just hold everything back. You play stuff like Trag, you play Maxi, you play Gores. Typically that's enough. And that, you, as long as you can survive and you get a turn, a full hand against Hieratics, like good luck. This Hieratic list is a big what if, um, because yeah. uh, when you look at the decks that exist in this format, um, I mean, you were playing Gear Gear Karakuri last time. That puts up a super formidable board from almost nothing. I'm playing Wind Up this time, almost the same scenario. And importantly, both of those boards end on exactly Shockmaster. If you can build a board comparable to the board you were building with Hieratics, except you also get to play trap cards like Torrential, Prison, Bottomless, uh, and you get to play Shockmaster to lock your opponent out of it, it's probably not the best option to be playing the combo variant that loses to Call Monster rather than the combo variant that can, like, also set three. And right. that's kind of why Hieratics doesn't make a splash, despite the fact that, I, as I think we saw in game three, they have a ton of cards that are impressively yeah. powerful. And for what it's worth, mm -hmm. this isn't the last time we're seeing Hieratic. Eventually, this deck sort of morphs into uh, what's known as Hieratic Rulers, and that is yes. a top deck for a long time, about a six-month period, if I remember correctly. The ceiling on that deck is just so much higher. I do like that this feels like sort of like a modern Yu-Gi-Oh! combo combo deck mm -hmm. where you're just trying to like kill your opponent going second or just build like a decent board going first and if they don't have the outs well then you know you might just win but i do agree i it's i don't know if like you've seen this joseph like when we were doing research for this ahead of time but all the duelists that i was like looking up their profiles like for their different decks they really didn't talk that highly about Shockmaster. It's like they crazy. didn't talk about it like this format warping card that's like just automatically wins you the game. Most of the profiles I saw were like, yeah, I summoned it like once or twice and like it was fine. And that to me just is baffling because well, later on Shockmaster becomes like one of the worst fucking like mistakes in Yu-Gi-Oh. And I think that's obviously just a product of the game evolving, but it's crazy that at the time it just like wasn't, you yeah. know? <laughs> no, um, it is a... Uh... It is part of Yu-Gi-Oh! Evolving, but it's also part of just, like, understanding the capacities of that card. 
Um, for instance, the wind-up list that I'm playing is from the same tournament as your Hieratic list, and it's mm -hmm. still on Hunter, because historically, wind-ups with Hunter is crazy, right? And even though you yeah. only have one copy of Zenmeity, you can Hunter maybe twice. So if your opponent has committed a lot to the board, you chew through it, and then you go for a long combo, you can get the last remaining couple of cards out of their hand with a Hunter. This ends up being cut in later iterations of the deck because the extremely streamlined version that makes exactly the Shockmaster combo that I showed off in Game 2 is so head and shoulders above everything else that it is not worth a consideration of potentially putting a brick in your deck when you could just be playing Shockmaster. We get into scenarios where, like, early on, we're like, well, why would I summon Shockmaster? It gets run over by freaking Utopia, of all things. Uh, but as people figure out... Um, just how explosive individual turns can be. Uh, the Hieratic turns that are uninterrupted, the wind-up turns that are uninterrupted, the Girgia Karakuri turns that are uninterrupted. They recognize, oh my god, if I don't stop monster effects, I'm going to die. And Shockmaster is a really great way to do that and a really great way to end your monster effect combo. During this time, you see these really expansive trap lineups specifically to combat those types of cards. And uh, they just become more indispensable as Shockmaster is recognized as a huge issue in Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's why decks like uh, Hieratics, which doesn't have the main deck space to be playing that kind of stuff, kind of has a tough time in these metagames. And um, yeah, this is... You know, I, I thought was it was a, a an illustr illustrative set uh, for the uh, for the period. I think so as well. And uh, now it seems like we're moving on to like November slash December 2012 here, mm -hmm. and uh, we got to touch on like some more decks that we haven't seen before. Hieratic had been out since like April or May of <laughs> yeah. 2012, and this, this was like it. its first like actual top. So uh, it took this long just for people to like actually figure out the deck. And then all of a sudden you just start seeing it everywhere and it starts becoming like another one of like the decks that, you know, gets bundled in with the rest at this time. But wind up still around. Yep. Insector is still around. Like yep. even with one Dragonfly, one Hornet, we haven't even shown that off yet. Right. I mean, uh, even Dino Rabbit, Dark World are still around. Yeah, exactly. Dark World, I think, gets multiple tops like in November, mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm if i not wrong. Though so notably. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the format evolves in next episode. Uh, who knows what we're going to be playing? In one very particular way. Um, the 2012 uh, November format is um, mostly occurs at YCS Seattle. And at that tournament, uh, a deck is innovated that becomes a huge problem. A deck called mermail so look forward Ooh, to that that'll be exciting for next time we will be seeing probably a lot of that in the next couple of episodes so guys that's gonna wrap it up for another episode let's go ahead and shout out the patrons as always a big shout to shout 1317 moto cameron smith tim 0 x3 ian musa chaotic people sj winchester part two pony stark dan the man hoban mbt play medulce synchro guy ole yusuf asano 5 mystic walk i ship mbt and simo draconic rockside logan thomas peter gregory thomas elson jordan coons kelvin iron blades and purist jesse with true orgasm brother paul chris so david lou skyros dylan hunter john two base extremely vulgar man Brody Eastwood Day, Sir Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Hornet, give me Speed Warrior, give me Death, Jonah Messenger, oh my god, guys, please read your cards, CC Gaming, thanks for the sleeves, Dad, Matthew Brady, Dyer the Egyptian Editor, Max, Tom Russell, why read your cards when you can just click buttons, Ben Snatch Shield for Prague 2021, Helios 515, Paint French Girls like one of your MBTs, Black Acre, say Gage Gang Engage three times fast, the entire state of Indiana, D's Cards, MBT fans gaming more than COVID, Simping for Simo, Mark Jackson, Tyler H, Justice for Queen Tiramisu, and Simo's Harem of Sexy Yugi tubers. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.